that's where we'll start up from. The focus on the budget presented by the president at the National Assembly yesterday. There's been multiple reactions and some are wondering that statement of the president that the economy indeed has been modest in growth but positively so and that the focus will be on human capital development. Our guest already in the studio was actually nodding when the president talked about the focus on the children. No, we'll start off from there. We have Mr. Buka Kiari, former chairman of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group here in our studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So let's start off from that point where you were nodding your head when you heard the president say the human capital development, I mean, is the greatest asset Nigeria has. He said that over and over again, but he talked about particular focus on it, the children. Indeed. Um, for a nation to thrive and grow, you need to invest in human capital. Um, the hard infrastructure is given. Um, it's absolutely necessary. But the soft infrastructure, which is actually the brain, or, um, is, is, is m the most critical of all of our investments. I mean, uh, the data is out there that we have the largest number of out-of-school children. Uh, and that basically is a ticking time bomb. If the security situation today is bad, 10, 15 years from now, it's going to be worse. Uh, so that need, needs to be addressed. Of course, we need to see the sectoral allocation of the budget to see if we have set aside anything above 10% of the budget to education. And that would tell the people that government is serious in addressing the issue of education. Yeah, but when you look generally at the presentation of the budget and the president's focus, I mean, when you listen to his speech yesterday, um, the budget has been titled a budget of renewed hope. Do you look to 2024 with hope? Uh, there is hope in the sense that when one looks at the numbers, um, compared to the last two or three budgets, there is a meaningful progress. What do I mean by that? You look at the deficit, for example. In absolute terms, the deficit is about 8 trillion naira versus 13 trillion this year, 2023. Um, when you look at the capital expenditure as a percentage of the total budget, it is higher. Now, we are still in a deficit situation, which means that the borrowing amounts are going to be there and how the debt service numbers are high. However, compared to the previous year, which is 2023, it's a meaningful progress. Now, some of the assumptions might be difficult. Realistic assumption for oil price, that's fine. So about $78 per barrel. Right now, it's trending around 80. Some analysts are even predicting higher numbers going down for the rest of uh, the next three to six months. Um, the other thing is the production volume, which is put at about 1.8 million barrels per day. Uh, that is achievable. It's not just the volume of production, but it is also the theft, which needs to be addressed head on. And I see a you know, some moves made in the last few weeks or few months. And if that is addressed, then we should see our production go higher. Those would make some of these assumptions stand. And the revenue collections and revenue leakages need to also be addressed. Um, I believe that the chairman of the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform uh, Mr. Taiwo uh, Oyedele had also remarked on certain things that the committee is doing, uh, and that may also give us, either in the short or medium term, uh, the blockage of leakages by automating and digitizing processes. So, in a nutshell, I would call this a budget or the resetting of the macro policies of the country. We've been going in with a lot of fiscal rascality, for lack of a better phrase. We have been having a lot of, you know, depressing numbers with higher inflation, et cetera, et cetera. But I think this is the beginning of change, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of the economy. You know, the, in, in his um, speech, the president talked about 
improving effectiveness of the budget performance. Now, if you look at what's happened in the 2023 budget, yes, it's not his budget, but what do you think, and following the trend, the budgets have not performed as expected over time. Uh, Would there be a difference? I mean, exactly. Effectiveness is that we need to make sure that we are monitoring the implementation of the budget as quickly as, as, as tightly as possible. Uh, the era of doing too many supplementary budgets ought to stop because it means that you haven't planned properly. Of course, as things go on and things might change, and therefore you could address those issues, even in corporate world, we, you know, there is that tendency, but it is significant changes in the macro that would make you go back and reset your budget. Now, here, in, in the case of Nigeria, it has been consistently doing it, in which case even the budget itself, when it's presented, the follow-through becomes difficult, and people just keep shoving uh, additional spendings, and, and that may actually make the managing of the budget from the side of the presidency difficult because what you need to have is that once the budget has been uh, planned and presented, uh, I think the various MDAs need to keep close monitoring in the execution of the budget. And at the end of the day, that will also engender confidence from the point of view of foreign investors and our you know, multilateral international partners, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a good practice for us to have a disciplined ex execution of our budget. And it'll be interesting to see how that is done in the days to come, because shortly after the president gave the speech at the National Assembly and spoke of the general areas which his administration intends to focus on, uh, poverty reduction is one of them, internal security, and job creation. Um, I'm sure that this certainly was music to the ears of those, uh, not just in, in the public sector, but also in the private sector, because if jobs are going to happen, they're going to come largely from the private sector. And then when you look in the president's speech, uh, there's an area where he says, emphasizing public-private partnerships, we have strategically made provisions to leverage private capital for big ticket infrastructure projects in energy, transportation, and other sectors. That part stood out for me, and I, I've, I've been wondering, looking at our history with you know, how we've collaborated with the private sector and the mixed results that we've received in those areas, how successful do you think that we will be, or that the government will be, in trying to leverage um, the, yeah, leverage private capital in terms of these areas that you're looking at? It's music to my ears. As, some, as a major player in the private sector, when I see government actually even bringing in conversation that says PPP is absolutely critical, even in critical areas such as power or energy, um, it means that the government is saying there is limited resources as far as the government purse is concerned. However, if you make it such that there is an opportunity for the private sector to come in and invest, then, you know, we may end up beginning to catalyze our economy for growth. Um, I am of the opinion that it might take more than a year to reset what had happened in the past. And so the 2024 budget should be the beginning of that conversation. Maybe in, in a couple of years, so by 2025, the reset should have been completed. And then going forward thereafter, we may go into a growth trajectory. Could now, you... some people would feel that that might be a bit prolonged, mm -hmm. that the sooner we do this, the better for us. Yes, but I mean, addressing it headlong, I mean, it is interesting that you are seeing this more in the long term, and this is budget 2024. Correct. Uh, but I am wondering, looking at how public-private partnerships have worked in our recent history. How optimistic are you that government will be able to get it right from the foundation this time around, given the mixed results we've seen so far? I'm, I'm tying it into what Mr. President said during the ministerial retreat, meaning that there would be KPIs, there would be goals and objectives, and things would be 
you know, critically and seriously looked at and monitored. Now, if you marry that to this budget and the budget's performance or effectiveness, then, you know, the, the, the rational expectation is to see an implementation. And if private-public partnership is one of such objectives, then that need to be put in the front burner. Which models would you say we, we should explore more? I mean, which ones would you say have given the, the best results that government should leverage more on? Or, or these are the models that, you know, they should copy more of or replicate more of? Uh, I mean, we've seen it with the, with the telecoms industry. Uh, you know, we've seen where it was a monopoly run by government to where it is now more or less privately run. And uh, the efficiency, even though when we first had it in 2001, August or thereabouts, when MTN issued the first few thousand, hundred thousand lines, a uh, price per minute was extremely exorbitant. Today, it has crashed down to a meaningful thing. In fact, nobody can do any business without the tel telecom involved, in involvement as a channel of delivery, as a channel for payment, etc., etc. Now, we can do the same with many of the things where government is in control of, whether it is the rail or energy, uh, and even in the energy, the entire energy value chain uh, from generation, transmission to distribution, uh, all of those need to be privatized, well capitalized, and the requirements for capital in those industries should then be uh, the job of the regulatory agencies or agency involved, uh, and thereby confidence by the private sector would bring in the capital in rolling out those. And thought, it's a critical infrastructure. I thought the electricity sector had already was, been privatized as well. Well, the, the only the element that sector. is, yeah, the only element that has been privatized is the distribution. Transmission is still not quite fully privatized. True. Generation, even at the generation level, only a few private sector are generating. The ones that you see, the larger projects, are still government contracts. So if those could also be done very quickly and then bring in private parties to be uh, in the ownership structure, I, I think it would bode well for us. Yeah, mm. you know, Mr. Kerry, I know that we're not, um, we're not discussing the electricity sector, but <laughs> the private partnership, the public-private partnership model that the president's talked about is something that they're going to push at immensely. But then some will say, as it is, even the part of the electricity sector that's, that's been privatized, so to speak, the desired effect is not being seen. Because according to the, the speculation, that it wasn't properly done, and they, they has to, it has to be revisited. So if the president is talking about using, emphasizing the public-private partnerships model for the country and for development, basically in this 2024 that we're going into, what do you think needs to be changed vis-a-vis -vis what happened in the, sec in the electricity sector and what they're looking to? You know, the, the thing about it is that in some instances, we may need to talk more. There should be transparency in the transaction, in, in the conversations, and in the engagements. There is also need to have periodic milestones that need to be communicated to the public. I mean, a power sector, you know, going into that, a, 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 to do a 1,000 megawatt or a 500 megawatt plant, you would, it takes time. But so for the gestation period or during the period of pregnancy, nothing would be seen. However, if at the end of the day, there are things that can be shared with the public and the expectations met, then we would be fine. The other element is actually what Mr. President had said, which is that the PPP arrangement need to be looked at and you, we need to fast track some of the low hanging fruits. And if we can do that, then those few successes will give us the momentum to catalyze growth uh, in the various sectors. Let's go back to this budget here and again weighed against the 2023 budget as it is. So in 2023, it appears as at September 2023, the federal government retained its revenue um, target was exceeded as at September 2023. Now, if we go by this and what the target is, if we get the graphics on the screen, what they are targeting for revenue in 2020, 
for, is there a guarantee that we'll be able to achieve that? You talked about the realistic nature of the benchmarks. As Correct. They are. Correct. Do you think we'll be able to reach that mark? I, I believe with the revenue side of the equation, it is part, it's possible to meet that target. Sorry. Okay. Uh, that uh, allocation expenditure. We're talking about the revenue. The revenue uh, side. This is the allocation. This is allocation. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to this soon. So, the, the, in, in terms of the revenue, I think this year's uh, revenue targets have been met or nearly met, about 97% or thereabouts. Now, the, the way we are looking at this is that the, the, the assumption is oil production, and it's possible to hit that 1.8 million barrels. Now, what, and the pricing looks right. Mm -hmm. the, the other elements are not. But yeah. so the revenue generation could happen, especially with the uh, privatization uh, uh, component, even though it is small, it's a percent of total revenue. I think there should be more emphasis on that in terms of privatization uh, uh, revenue generation because I believe it is less than a trillion naira, but it, it, we could do more uh, somewhere around 0.3 trillion or 0.4 trillion. Um, we could do more because the the those in firms or those entities in private hands tend to become more efficient and generate more opportunity for revenue to the government in terms of uh, taxes and re revenues long-term than in the immediate. So it is a way of uh, investing, if you will, quote-unquote, uh, our capital uh, in, in, in that regard. So the revenue generation is a bit realistic. Yeah, uh, some people say maybe a little too realistic. They wanted it a bit more ambitious. They, they think that, I mean, just speaking with an analyst yesterday on our program, the News at 10, and he thought, look, why is the, uh, the uh, projected production of crude oil still hovering around 1.78. Uh, he thinks it should be in the region of at least 2 million bar barrels per day. You agree with him? I, I, I do agree. We can do more. I mean, especially with the um, uh, strong possibility of the Dangote refinery coming on stream mm -hmm. during the course of the year, uh, early part of the year, I understand. Uh, we need to be more aggressive with, the, with oil production, blockage of the leakage, uh, and also gas, which I think has not been discussed mm -hmm. because this is the train number seven or train seven of the NLNG need to also come into stream uh, because that is what one would call a transitional uh, 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 energy source for the green economy. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, uh, which is the president also specifically mentioned, as a matter of fact, is going to Dubai now. Uh, for the COP summit, but I am wondering how that is going to how that is going to eventually feature in um, our uh, our budget. I mean, he has very ambitious plans. When you look at what he said as we approach the COP28 climate summit, a pivotal moment for global climate action, have directed relevant government agencies to diligently work towards securing substantial funding commitments that will bolster Nigeria's energy transition. So it, it is something that he's certainly considering. Right. Uh, but I'm looking at some of the other parameters now. Uh, you've agreed that it ought to have been a little more ambitious in terms of, uh, you know, our production of crude oil. But crude oil also seems largely to be the major source of revenue, despite all of the other ambitious things that we've heard. Solid minerals saying, look, if we get our game right, <laughs> we should not be we, we, we should not be borrowing the money anywhere. Uh, but it doesn't look to be featuring very prominently in terms of w one of the areas we're looking to be getting our revenues from. Is it an oversight? Or are we just being very cautious about it? I, I believe as a nation we need to be purposeful and deliberate. We need to be purposeful and deliberate on some of the few things that we've been talking about and dancing around without necessarily jumping ourselves into it which is that the diversification of the revenue source, not the diversification of the, of, of, of the GDP, because if you look at the GDP, oil and gas as a component, it's around 8 to 9% max, which means that the economy is diverse. Uh, Agri is around 10 or 12%. However, the revenues that government extracts from those other sectors 
is not comparable to the, to the oil and gas. Therefore, there has to be a meaningful way of addressing those issues. So the value chain need to be fully developed. Uh, private sector need to get involved. And even within the agri space, once it leaves the farm gate, there should be some uh, 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 revenue possibilities down the road in terms of the processing and uh, the selling of, of the finished goods. Uh, and the same with solid minerals. Solid minerals, I think, had been, you know, it has become so fragmented such that states, local authorities, were, are not, have not been carried along from the center. And what we need is an integrated approach such that whatever we produce need to be, um, you know, known, you know, for lack of a better way, word. Accountability. Uh, exactly. So we have to make it accountable. And it is from that that the value extraction will begin to happen in terms of taxation and levies and what have you. So those are some of the critical elements because if we look at that, we can do what some other smaller economies have done in the solid minerals arena. Yeah. Uh, our colleagues in Lagos have a couple of questions. So. Yes, thank you, Nyota. Um, good morning, Mr. Booker. Besides solid minerals and the other areas, you know, earlier in the year, particularly in the second quarter, the FIRS was celebrated for surpassing its um, uh, projected revenue uh, target at 5.5 trillion naira. Uh, and we don't know what has been, you know, brought in in the last quarter of the year. So if that's is the requisite amount there, that means that there's a huge potential, you know, for maybe not hitting the 18 trillion Naira revenue uh, projection in the budget, but there's a huge potential there, you know, and all the other sectors that have been created as a result of the expansion of the cabinet. Uh, shouldn't we be more optimistic in that regard where revenue projection is concerned for the 2024 budget? The, uh, I, think, I think one of... Uh, I believe that um, what we need to look at is that as economic activities also begin to pick up, I believe that maybe not in the first half of 2024, but down the road, economic activities would ha would, will pick up. Um, what I mean by that is that the inflation rate, the inflation in rate of inflation increase is slowing down. So that means that we're seeing somewhere turning around, maybe by January, maybe February. But at the same time, some of the production at the economic levels may begin to pick up. Now, there would be so many assumptions going into that. I wouldn't believe that the 3.7 or thereabouts in the budget assumption may come to pass. But even if it is at a 3% rate, GDP growth rate, there would be more activities and therefore possibilities at the, uh, for FIRS to collect more in taxes. Now, the, 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 the other element, of course, is the royalties from the production if we can block those leakages. I think as a line item, that might be a higher number than even the FIRS receipts, even though the FIRS receipts over the last few years have been improving despite the strong headwinds we are facing as a nation. Mm. So in a nutshell, it's actually a, uh, something that one would say it's, uh, you know, it's, it's to be seen uh, if FIRS could meet the target for 2024. Uh, I believe that the 2023 target would probably be achieved uh, based on what we have seen so far. And if it is achieved, let, let's also look at, you know, government activity on, on a, a larger scale. Um, what's the promise of prudence and accountability uh, in the area of fiscal responsibility, particularly with regards to, um, you know, the cabinet size of this government, which is... Uh, beyond what we've seen in the past, the wage bill also, um, you know, what's the promise of prudence in the management of funds for the budget in 2024? 
Yeah, as a nation, we must actually look at the possibility of becoming or having what I call fiscal competitiveness. And that one, one requires that. As a, you know, one has to do a benchmark with similar economies. And for us, that has to be seen very seriously. The fiscal side of things have gone to the dogs, uh, pardon my French. Um, and it is, it, we need to reverse the trend. And I think we would start not just with um, the number of ministers or whatever, but actually even the spending we are doing. We need to look at it and make sure that we're not wasting our resources. And I think if we go through the whole spending, on the, even on the recurrent side, uh, particularly even capital spending, and redefine some of those, we may end up being a bit more prudent and be more efficacious in that whatever Naira we spend should be generating return or reducing costs. So, so essentially, uh, the, the, our, we, our work is cut out for us. I mean, on the side of the, of the, of the, of the presid, uh, presidency, uh, because that is where the bulk of the spending is going to rest. And, and we need to look at that critically. Uh, and we hope that uh, officials of the administration are reflecting on that. Uh, let's look at, you know, uh, some of the projections of the president in, in the budget, which he says that it will achieve a job-rich uh, economic growth rate and poverty reduction. Those are the areas that he is prioritizing in the budget. Uh, so what partnerships, besides looking at the private sector, what partnerships can we uh, begin to expect from relevant ministries, i.e. the Ministry of labor and employment, poverty alleviation, such that we can see that these uh, areas of focus can transform the economy. What, what partnerships should we expect in that regard? I think it is more, it cuts across many other ministries because labor is more of a custodian of, the, of, 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 of those aspects whereby you would be reporting the data and so on and so forth and engagement with uh, various entities within the economy. But I think the most significant things that we should be looking at is the agri value chain. How can we unleash uh, and capture value and generate more uh, opportunities and more jobs? The micro, small, and medium enterprises growth. What can we do to ensure that micro, small, and medium enterprises grow? Uh, because you see, when small and medium enterprises are growing, they are in the millions. I believe the last data I saw, somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 20 million micro, small, and medium enterprises. If only 20% of them would be adding one additional person uh, in, you know, to, to, because there is growth, uh, then you would be generating millions of jobs. They may still be low-paying jobs, but in either service or direct labor, that would be another catalyst. Manufacturing, we need to actually go back to what I call light manufacturing because that may be also another uh, area where we will uh, generate a lot of jobs. And the only, well, a few other factors affect manufacturing in Nigeria, which is energy is one of them. Uh, some of the policy pronouncements is another. Fair and competitive uh, uh, laws and policies uh, would also be a catalyst for that. The other element is in the entertainment industry, which is actually going whether government does anything or not, and also in the tax space. This is where the Minister of Digital Economy had made, uh, you know, re unveiled his strategic posture or his the strategic uh, uh, steps. Those are all catalysts for job creation. And in some cases, those jobs may actually be outside coming in, meaning in an outsourced nature. Uh, and therefore, all of those pieces put together right. may begin to show the job, job creation angle 
to the economy. And that is what the people want to see, uh, job creation, how to ensure that prices are brought down, reduction in inflation, so that we can all smile, not just to the bank, but to the market. But we'll take a break now, Mr. K. Aaron. When we return, uh, we'll talk about how to ensure that the people feel this budget and actively participate in the process as well. That's the moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Let's continue with our conversation. Uh, Mr. Booker Carey, former chairman of NESG, is still with us as we take a deep dive into the budget proposal for 2024, which the president uh, laid before the National Assembly yesterday. Thank you for staying with us, Mr. Carey. Uh, you know, for a lot of Nigerians, it, this may be business as usual, even though for this government, uh, it's trying to perhaps achieve something different. In fact, with the presentation of the budget, we saw it done differently. Uh, the president gave his speech and the ministers of finance and uh, budget, they had their breakdown session elsewhere, which is a departure uh, from what we've seen in you know previous times. So this is different. But let's speak to how the Nigerian people receive this and how we ensure that this budget uh, at least improves their livelihood. The good thing again is that we've seen state governments also lay in their budgets and in recent times we've seen a lot of attention being paid uh, to how states are spending funds, you know, Lagos State, you might recall that controversy uh, around funds allocated to buses, vehicles and the rest. And looking at what Nigerians have said across board, a lot of them still believe well, the budget is padded anyway. Uh, the politicians and people in government will allocate a large chunk to themselves and they do not see anything different with this budget. How do we begin to turn this tide around? Should we look into that budget and see funds still allocated uh, to exotic vehicles, uh, lots of funds allocated to feeding and all of those, well, seemingly exuberant things? Uh, would you say that Nigerians should expect anything different from this particular budget? Um, uh, I think I need to study the uh, sectoral allocation. But for me, um, um, I would like to see an emphasis on education because sooner or later that can have a transformative power. Uh, and the uh, same thing at the subnational levels, uh, meaning all the states. Ordinarily, the state's capital expenditure as a percent of the total spending ought to be above 50% for most states, or, or all of them, in, incidentally. Because the, the lower you go at the government's tiers, the more capital spending should be allocated as a percent of total spending. So if federal total capital spend expenditure is about 30 or so percent, states ought to be around 50 and local governments ought to be around 60. Now, that's just me uh, saying that the budgets at the subnational levels ought to be spent on things that one would call uh, investments. Now, unfortunately, at things such as buying vehicles are considered capital. In some parts of Africa even, even a country like Botswana, they don't consider those as capital spending, even though accounting-wise it is. They look at education, healthcare, and some of the basic infrastructure as capital spending. Uh, so, so essentially what you do is that there are certain things that have a direct correlation to the average lives of the citizens. And those are the things that we need to unbundle transparency in not only the allocation but in where the spendings go is absolutely critical and then we also need the ngos you know entities such as budget budget it uh, and the likes to also you know ex uh, amplify the spendings that we are you know that our governments are doing and in that instance, over time, we will see an improvement in allocation, but also in the execution. And in the decisions and choices, 
uh, whereby we need to favor our own. So if it is vehicles that are going to be purchased, are those vehicles manufactured or assembled in Nigeria? If they are, then it means that uh, there are some uh, effects of creating jobs here or sustaining jobs here. So uh, I, I, I think that conversation is going to be an ongoing conversation, uh, and uh, the all stakeholders need to be involved in that conversation in general. Well, uh, we'll look forward to that. I, I think it was in that presentation by the ministers that it was mentioned that people can actually monitor and track the budget uh, certain eye monitor application in the budget uh, monitor application which by the way i've tried to get that but i have not been able to get that so again there's a huge question mark around that if we want the people to actively participate and be transparent that we need to ensure the tools are not just there but they are working but speak to us about the private sector because the president said that you know the private sector will be taking on big ticket infrastructure, talked about energy. I know you've talked about that, but there's something that you know, caught my attention. The CBN governor in his uh, CIBN speech talked about poor service delivery from the public sector. And we're asking the private sector to partner with the public sector, but we still see that the public sector largely carries on with that anyhowness, if I can use that expression. I mean, not all of them, but you find out that a large chunk of them still have that mentality. I mean, it is government work, okay? It will ensure that you sort us before we let you pass. People want to fix roads, and you see local governments standing in their way, and they say, well, we're trying to fix this road for the people. So is there a way around this anyhowness? So at least the intentions of the president and this budget will be achieved. Uh, indeed, I, I think I think the the key to it is in reorienting uh, or reorientation of the public sector uh, uh, in terms of service delivery. I know that there is an end, something called Servicom. Uh, I don't know if they've been successful or if they have actually even come out and uh, shared with us the public, uh, you know, how effective uh, they are as an entity. But generally speaking, from the point of view of a private sector player, you tend to see that, and you are pleasantly surprised when you get an engagement with a public sector that has uh, professionalism, that delivers services to you, uh, but, but it's, they are few and far between. And I believe that that culture of service delivery or service quality need to be raised. Um, and, you know, there may be bright spots here and there, but I think overall it should be a complete culture of service delivery. The other thing is that a public se sector employee need to understand that they are there because the citizens, because of the citizens and the service delivery matters. And that uh, sort of orientation or mindset need to be inculcated in the average uh, public sector employee. Well, you know, lots of issues to unpack there, but because of time, I'd like to move to another point, which is quite vital. I, I think it was in the, the uh, you know, the campaign manifesto, right, of uh, now president, that he talked about a change in the approach to budgeting, that instead of, you know, basing our budget largely on the dollar value of projected oil revenue, that he will seek uh, to base our budgeting on the projected level of government spending instead. So sort of let us spend our way out of this, because he said rightfully that there are lots of challenges globally and, of course, locally. That was during campaigns. Now we've seen the budget size. The National Assembly raised issues about the size of our debts. There is, again, a lot of debate about that. Whether or not uh, we're able to meet our projections is another thing. Looking at the budget performance for 2023, well, the year is not over, but so far it would look like we're not meeting those targets just yet. My question to you is that are you concerned about the size of our debt? If you are, do you think that the government is then right to try to spend our way out of this scene that will keep incurring more debts, means we'll keep servicing more debts, and that will be pulling its weight on our expenditure and budgets? 
the, the reality of the situation is that uh, if you are going to do a meaningful budget uh, for 2024, which is what the Mr. President had presented um, yesterday, you have to have a deficit spending. Um, uh, unless we have laws to quantify and say that you must have surplus or you must have a um, budget that is balanced. Uh, I don't think Nigeria is ready for a balanced budget amendment, if you will. Uh, the, the critical piece with any budget that is oriented towards growth is that certain investments have to be made. And unfortunately, because of the, situ the, the, the situation we are in currently, you just have to spend your way with borrowings. But the borrowing has to be done efficaciously and efficiently. The spending ought to go into capital expenditure, which literally means that if you are getting the uh, debt at reasonable rates and you are investing and the return on those investments are far higher than the debt services, then over a longer horizon, you would actually be in a position to service the debt. Now, looking at the revenue profile, and if we can block the leakages, we can do those things that we've mentioned earlier, then what, would, what one would see is the beginning of the reduction in the deficit levels as we go along. 6.11 2023 of GDP uh, uh, is the deficit. Uh, for 2024, it is projected at 3.88%. Now, that is a good trend if one, one year is considered a trend. Um, it, so, so essentially, it means that by 2025 and there, thereafter, things would get better. But all of those is contingent on efficient spending. Unless you get that right, spending that would actually generate more and the blockage of the li leakages, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think it's a combination of things. And all of those must be done efficiently for us to get ourselves out of the debt burden, so to speak. Mm. Um, the debt level as a percent of GDP is not that high. But the debt service issue is where our problem lie. Uh, and all of this, you know, is targeted at growth and the projected growth rate for 2024, according to the president in this budget, is 3.67%. And if we consider, you know, what even global financial institutions had projected for Nigeria for 2024, there was no growth rate. There was 2.5, I believe, for 2023. But for 2024, there was zero growth projection. So how realistic is 3.67% even if, you know, all of these um, um, things that you have projected are done by the administration? How realistic is 3.67%? Um, that's one of the things that I made uh, comment on, uh, which is that it may not necessarily be a possibility for us to hit 3.6% um, GDP growth. Um, but if we can catalyze some of the activities and we also bring in uh, quite a number of the informal sector into the formal sector, we may see a boost. It may not statistically be showing to us but based on the revenue collections and some of the other nuances, we may see an improvement, possibly go up to a, around three or the low threes, 3% uh, 3 GDP growth. Uh, th so that's one of the issues I have with the, with the assumptions. So, Mr. Kerry, there, there are a couple of things that we're almost, we're almost out of time, but um, the president was quoted as saying, and, and if I could get that quote out, it says, to improve the effectiveness of our budget performance, the government will focus on ensuring value for money, greater transparency, and accountability, is the president's quote. He says, in this regard, we will work more closely with development partners and the private sector. Now, now you are very excited about exactly. that private sector bit. Right. But the question is this other part where he says, money, value for money, right. greater transparency, yes. And accountability. 
take that on one side and then look at this. The parameters on which the, the budget was put together says um, domestic factors impacting the medium term fiscal outlook include domestic revenue mobilization challenges, mm -hmm. public debt sustainability concerns, elevated inflation, challenging domestic business environment, all of these things. Take that again and weigh it against what he has said he wants to do. Transparency, accountability. So the, 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 the latter statement you made is, are the challenges we face? And then the, the way for us to get out of things is what he had mentioned, which is that there has to be transparency. There has to be, you know, what I, I've been calling it ROI, return on investment. That's the value for money part. And, and then, and then I'd be accountable to your actions. And that's why I was connecting it with the ministerial retreat. Because Mr. President had already given the marching orders, didn't he? What that are the performance matters. Yeah, yes. What are the concretes that you want to see as a result of this pronouncement? We need to see a dashboard like performance monitoring of all aspects of the budget or all the objectives that the government wants to achieve. So we should be focused on the results or the outcomes rather than on the process itself. The process has already been laid down by Mr. President. And what then happens is that whether it's going to be on a quarterly basis, monthly might be too short a time period, uh, there should be a review that says how have we been doing against these promises we've made mm. to, the, to the country. A review with the Nigerian people. With the, exactly. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Kerry, I was going to ask you the question about consequence management. Would the president be punished his people <laughs> if they go out of line? But we we'll leave that for now. Uh, thank you so much. Former chairman of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, Mr. Booker Kerry, thank you for joining us for this conversation. You're welcome. As well as daily, we'll be back in a moment. Just stay with us.